Hey there, Alex here again. Real quick video this time. So there were some questions in the comments, questions in the comments, about what material these cheap linear rails were made of. And I wasn't exactly sure how to answer that because A, there were no specific spec sheets for these, and B, when you're getting a lot of this import stuff, you can't really trust the spec sheets 100%. So, I decided to just do what's called a spark test. And I won't bore you with the details of what a spark test is. You can go online and just look it up. But basically what you're doing is just grinding a piece of steel or a piece of metal of some kind uh, and reading the spark, seeing like the, the spark density, the arc, um, the bloom of the little, you know, little flex off of there and that type of thing. So um, depending on you know, the density, the, the length of the sparks, and how fireworky they are, how much they burst off of bursts. You can generally tell what grade of steel it is or what type of steel it is. And mostly I wanted to see if this was like a uh, ferritic or martinistic or austenitic uh, stainless steel or just a, a high carbon steel. And I suspected that it's a high carbon steel of some type for a couple different reasons. When you're doing this type of like mass manufacturing, super cheap stuff, I don't think they're gonna spring the extra like, you know, buck or two a rail for or whatever it is for a, a grade of stainless steel that will be, you know, hardenable and then the extra expense of the process of hardening it. So anyway, I just thought I would check that before I went ahead and said, yeah, this is what I think it is. But you know, I was 90% sure to be. Now I did get a couple different types of rail. So I tested both of these. I just have them labeled as rail number one and rail number two, but they appear to be nearly the identical stuff. I got the uh, MG12 uh, 12 millimeter regular rail from uh, Banggood. And then I also, because this is for a live stream that's coming up that's already past due, um, I had to get it in a hurry. So I ordered a rail from Adafruit, which is just import rail you can get on Ally Express or Banggood for like a fraction of the price. But I figured, hey, support women in STEM, support female front run businesses and pay the extra bucks to get it quickly because they're just over there in Brooklyn. And if you are a machinist or a metallurgist or something like that, you uh, materials engineer and you work with this type of stuff all the time and you want to make some comments in the, uh, the video description, go right ahead and put your two cents in. So let me show you generally what we're looking for. This are like uh, this is from a public domain document, just talking about the pattern of the sparks and a spark test. And uh, sorry about any noise in the background. I have some silicone curing, so I have a, a vent fan on. Anyway, we're generally going to be looking up at the top here for the uh, high carbon steel, and then we're going to be looking for down at the bottom from stainless steel. And you'll notice the stainless steel and the low carbon steel look kind of similar, but this is going to be hardened stainless and hardened high carbon steel, so the the sparks will be a little bit more energetic than these. Uh, kind of line drawings would depict. So this is a test of rail number one. This is the uh, 15 millimeter rail. And then we're gonna have rail number two. This is the MG12 stuff from Banggood. Then right here we have non-hardened uh, non uh, 1018 steel and then hardened 440 stainless steel. Regular old tool steel just from a cheap pair of import pliers. And then a cheap old, you know, dull file that I use to show super hardened steel. Most important thing we're going to be looking at is these fireworks here on the end, how much they pew, kind of like explode like that. And you can see rail number one and rail number two are both pretty much the same, very energetic. Then if we go ahead and look at the uh, non-hardened carbon steel, you see it's not. And then if we go on to the hardened stainless, it's more active than a non-carbon, but definitely not like the hardened high carbon steel. And then the tool steel we can see is extremely similar to a rail. And then the file steel is like it, but a lot more energetic. So just as comparison here, side by side, here's the tool steel and the rail number one. And then the tool steel and the rail number two. You can see how similar these both look. And then a side by side video, tool steel and rail number two. This is just so you can look at the sparking pattern. Very similar. And then here's a still frame, tool steel on the left and rail number two on the right. Now we'll take a look at hardened stainless versus our MG12 rail. On the left is the hardened stainless, on the right is the MG12 rail. You can see how much more energetic the little bursts are on the uh, the high one rail than they are on the stainless steel, which leads me to believe that this is probably not stainless. This is probably a hardened high carbon steel. So I think that's fairly conclusive. It's safe, I would say, to say that these are some kind of hardened, but not extremely hardened, high carbon steel, which is consistent with like the price point and the application and whatnot. 
And just saying high carbon in quotes is extremely vague. I mean, judging by uh, what I've seen and what I can just kind of intuit from this stuff, it's probably like, you know, a, what they would call a chrome steel or like bearing grade steel or, or something like that. It's just a, a high carbon content steel, probably with some like chromium, probably with some like silicon and other things in it. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. If you dig this type of stuff and you want to support me, the links are always in the video description below. There's Patreon, regular PayPal, affiliate links, all that kind of stuff. And I know some of you were getting sensitive to like the drama that's going on with a lot of those um, middleman payment type methods. So a uh, hack around that, one crazy hack they don't want you to know about is you can go down to the Bandcamp links where I'm selling music from one of my couple bands and that's a kind of like name your price thing. So you can grab an album and then say, hey, I was gonna give this guy 30, 40 bucks. So, you know, I'll pay 40 bucks for an album. And then you don't even have to download it if you don't like death metal, or you can gift it to a friend of yours who digs death metal. So that's kind of the best way I can think of to have like a secure middleman and avoid all of those other, you know, the drama, the controversy, whatever. So anyways, thanks a lot. Until the next video, get out there and make something awesome. Get out there and make some sparks.